So we were talking about the types actually. Can anyone tell me what is difference between approval and approval chain? Major difference is the optional column, basically. Yeah. For approval okay. chain, you do not have any option. Right. No, not optional. This one. This one you will not have. Sorry, all, yeah. Yeah, yeah. this option you will not have. And um, optional is nothing but where you should be seeing this for every business process step. If you don't want this step to be mandate in execution, you can actually keep that as an optional. Even this is not completed, you will be able to see the next step will business process will look at next step. So the major difference I can say approval and approval chain is approval. You can actually have anyone in the security group to actually select, but chain of approval chain is nothing but chain of approvers where you need to have all the um, members who are part of the security group should take an action. And you can add multiple security groups so that people from different security groups should be able to take an action or should be able to approve this one. Okay. So approval chain is nothing but chain of approvers. But whereas approval is nothing but uh, where you can actually have individual uh, member who can actually approve it. So let's say if HR administrator is there, five members are there. Since you need to have an approval, at least one person in that security group takes an action, you should be able to see this step will be completing and move for next step action. Okay. That's the difference between approval and approval chain. So mostly in all the business process that you actually configure, action and approval, these are the two major step type that you'll be using. The rest of all, it's not that the rest of all others are not used. But mostly around 85 to 90 percent of business process configuration you'll be making will be based on these two action and approval. Okay. And rest of all these things, case to case, actually. It depends upon the need, you'll be actually creating this. But a regular business process configuration, around 85 to 90 percent of business process configuration will, will involve just an action and approval. I have a question. Yeah. How many approvals are needed to have an approval chain? There is no limit, actually. Okay. So approval chain. Minimum. No, my question is the minimum to call it a chain versus a just approval. Okay. So it depends upon the security you configure, actually. So chain approval chain, the meaning of approval chain is chain of approvers. So if you have any, let's say you're actually hiring some senior position in executive board, okay, that requires an approval, okay, that requires an approval. And um, to approve senior level position, there might, there might be a specific security group will be creating. So right from CEO of the company to president, vice president, who are part of that executive board should approve that one, okay. It depends upon the requirement, okay. So how approval chain, what kind of approval it is, you will be creating a specific security group people who are part of that security group will be, um, uh, you know, the approving as part of the approval chain process and everyone in that approval chain process will be doing that. One. It can be more than one okay, that I can say, and there is no limit that this many approvers only will be part of approval chain. Okay. So based on that, we will be creating a security group and who are part of that security group will be approving uh, this one as part of chain process. Thank you. If that makes sense. Was that clear? Yes, thank you. Okay. So rest of all other things, case to case, you'll be actually looking at. And we'll try to understand the definition or the purpose of each of the step type. Okay. Coming to the batch, batch job. Okay, so batch job is nothing but a kind of scheduled process. Okay, anything that gets scheduled in workday, that process is called batch process actually. Okay, so any batch process 
that you wanted to run as part of the business process. He configured that bad job okay, here and let your business process run that one instead of manually running or scheduling as for the business process requirement. If you have any of batch process should trigger from the business process, you can actually select this one. And um, this is rarely, I have not seen any kind of typical use case that came in any of the implementations that I've done or any kind of support activity that I've done. But the purpose you need to know is any of the scheduled job that needs to be triggered as part of the business process, Workday has given a kind of flexibility that you can actually add it to the business process and then configure that. Okay. That's a kind of scheduled process. Okay. Next comes the checklist. Checklist is nothing but a kind of to-do activities. Okay. To-do list that you wanted to make. Okay. So when you select type called checklist, you should be seeing option to create new checklist or any of the existing checklists that we have actually. Okay. So if I take any of the existing checklist, new higher checklist. Okay. Checklist is nothing but list of activities to do actually. Okay. So as part of the checklist, okay, you can see send welcome announcement. Okay. Who has to send? HR administrator has to send. Okay, read and sign the policies. Okay, which is one of the um, steps that we'll be taking as part of to do actually. Obtain badge means obtain ID card. Okay, is something um, a different team has to take. Okay. Assign employee office, assign employee location. Okay. So in this way, you can actually assign a kind of checklist, prepare a checklist as per the business process, as per the business requirement. If you're going for hiring, you can actually consider any of the process that organization follows and include them as a kind of checklist and add them to the business process. Too. And um, if you're terminating an employee, okay, what are the checklists that employee has to perform before they before their last working day? Okay submit um, um you know laptop or submit batch okay um submit any kind of dues that are need that needs to be paid for organization and any of the medical bills needs to clear the medical bills any of the reimbursement clear the reimbursement these are all kind of checklists now that we can plan based on the requirement okay if employees get terminated so we can add the checklist as per the requirement of the business process and when the business process is executed Based on this checklist, your task will be completing one by one, actually. Okay. So that's a kind of typical checklist, um, you know, the, the step type you have where you can actually configure the process for each of the uh, transactions that we have in Workday. We can actually define the checklist, actually. Okay. That's about the checklist. And questionnaires, okay. Questionnaires is nothing but, you know, where you can actually frame some questions, actually. Okay. So you have a task called create questionnaire. Okay. Have a task called create questions. So this is the task. Within this task, you'll have create questions actually. And this is the task that your business process will understand. Okay, questionnaire kind of thing. So create questionnaire is a task. Okay. So whatever the previous question that we have seen, right? We'll be creating a question.
something like uh, you know, we're not exactly what it has to be something like. So you can actually frame questions like this, and those questions will be added to the questionnaire. And this questionnaire, you can actually add to the business process. Okay, so that these questions will be whoever needs to be answered these questions, these questions will be populated in the business process. So if I click on this, I have missed the order. So once I click on OK, this time will ask you to configure questionnaire that you've created actually. Okay. Generally, if you are sending questions to employees, you can actually configure employee security group. Okay. If you're uh, framing questions to any specific group, you can actually have um, that specific group configured here. Whatever security that you're getting here, these are coming from the business process security policy, actually. Okay. We discuss right. Uh, anyone who needs to take an action, who needs to perform a business process transaction, that has to come from the business process security policy. Okay. Well, I'm just trying to find anything relevant we have. Okay, so I've configured HR administrator as a kind of security group just for showing you the option. Okay. So once you submit this system, will ask you configure questionnaire now. We have selected step type should be questionnaire, but where are the questions? Is what it asks. Okay. So configure questionnaire. Select this one and add the questionnaire that we have created. Okay. Whatever we have created, you can actually add this. So you should be finding whatever question that we have created from the list actually. Okay. The same way what we have created, right? It is the same process. Okay. So the questions, whatever we have created, it is the same process. But I think this is not taking any new questions in this tenant. But generally the same way. Okay. Whatever we have um, created questions can be called here and you can actually configure the question. Many business process when execute. <clears throat> When your business process starts running, it will be looking at the questions and display those questions or populate those questions to the security group that, security group that you have configured actually. Okay. So now if you see the business process that we have configured, the step type is a kind of questionnaire. You have HR administrator. Now when this executes, whatever questions that are configured here will be triggered to the HR administrator and HR administrator will be actioning on those questions. 
So that's how your questionnaire step will be triggering actually. Okay. So based on the need of the business, you'll be confirming. I've, I've given a kind of random um, question, but based on your need, you can actually configure the questions that you might have. That's on the questionnaire. Okay. Anyone have any questions? Any questions on questionnaire or checklist, whatever we discussed? Anything unclear? Yeah, quick question, Namit. Uh, for the checklist, um, so let's say there are like three or four items in there, right? So are they informational or are they tasks? So you mean to say, as part of the checklist, can there be a yes. task or can there be a, anything specific that we can have outside of task is what your question is? No, so basically, let, let, let me kind of give a quick example. So you have a checklist and there are four items in there, right? Um, do this, do that, whatever. So is that a task meaning um, collect some documents, step yeah. one? Yeah. Right? So yeah. is that a task? Meaning I have no, to go and task. somebody needs to check mark that I have collected documents, which is step one. Or is it more informational? I get an email. I'm, I'm just trying to visualize you. Yeah. Where and how would I use checklist? The collect documents is not a kind of task that we have in work day, actually. Okay. So you're configuring I'm an example. I'm making up stuff. Yeah. So that's what look, we don't have um, any of um, you know those tasks. Okay. So we can configure a task. Okay. We can configure anything, um, you know, outside the outside. I was showing you right now, right? Uh, when we actually configure a checklist. Okay. Any of the specific checklist as per the need, generate documents or sign the documents. These are not um, uh, typical steps actually, okay. But we have an option like, If you see this checklist, okay, <clears throat> these are all to-do tasks, okay? So you can actually add them as a kind of tasks and these will be executing. So first you need to create a to-do task and then add those things. These are not workday standard things, okay? These are not workday standard things. We will need to add a to-do task and then call those to-do tasks into the checklist actually, okay? So if you access this one, This is not something, you know, Workday provides. Okay, we will be creating this one. Okay, we'll be creating a to-do task and then um, manage, uh, you know, uh, as part of the checklist, add those to-do tasks into Workday. We have a task called create to-dos actually. Okay, so through that to-dos, you'll be creating these things, send welcome announcement as a kind of to-do task that you'll be making and you'll be adding this to the checklist actually. Okay, so used by the checklist. Okay, you'll be adding this to the checklist and from there, you will be making the complete list of all the checklists that has to undergo as part of the business process execution. Make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So checklist and to do are similar, actually, but um, you know you will be calling to dos into the checklist because. Which within checklist, you know, we, we can't edit or we can't do any kind of, uh, you know, the text kind of add additions, you know, we cannot make. But to do's, we can actually create to do's and call those to do's into checklist. And that's how business process will be making a decision to actually, um, when it executes, go for a list of all the checklist items and execute as part of the business process. Okay. That's a kind of checklist. And then, 
complete questionnaire okay so is what we have seen so if there are any set of questions that needs to be uh, shared to the, all the new hires as part of the onboarding or as part of the new hire process you can actually frame those questions as part of the question and consolidated approval and consolidated approval chain are similar to approval and approval chain okay <laughs> Consolidated approval, you can see, you can see all. When I change to consolidated approval chain, you will not see. So it is similar to consolidated approval and consolidated approval chain. But what is the difference? Then if it is similar, why do we have two? This might be a question. Okay. So consolidated approval in the sense, management chain actually. Okay. So if there is anything that needs to be um that needs to be triggered to specific set of people okay specific set of people or let's say if you're hiring a key member into the organization okay key member into the organization there needs to be a kind of specific set of approvers who needs to action on that hiring approval actually okay so for such kind of cases you'll be creating a kind of management change security group okay so manager has to approve then senior manager has to approve then director has to approve then senior director has to approve then vice president has to approve then vice president senior vice president has to approve then executive um, board member has to approve then cto has to approve then chairman of the company has to approve so we have consolidated all the approvals consolidated into one security group and then have those approval from the consolidated approval. Okay, so consolidated approval is nothing but approvals from the management chain. Okay, so who will be taking care of the approval part, consolidating into one security group, and that security group will be taking care of consolidated approval. Okay, getting approval from a consolidated security group is nothing but consolidated approval. Okay, so for such kind of uh, needs, you'll be confident consolidated approval chain. It is similar to approval only in terms of behavior but as part of the purpose of this um, you know, consolidated approval chain you might have different set of people in the management chain who needs to take an action actually okay so there is nothing but consolidated approval chain anyone in that management chain okay so who is part of um, that particular security group needs to take an action okay so whereas consolidated consolidated um, Sorry, I was talking completely on consolidated approval, not consolidated approval chain. Consolidated approval takes all the management level people and get you a kind of consolidated approval. But whereas consolidated chain approval, okay, so you can configure multiple security group, multiple management chain security group, and everyone who are part of that management chain security group has to take an action, okay, has to take approval has to approve then only your business process will be moving further actually okay but for consolidated approval you have a flexibility that there is no need okay there is no need that everyone who is part of the security group has to approve but whereas consolidated approval chain has to have everyone to approve that one so that's the difference it is similar to approval and approval chain but the only the difference is you'll have specific security group called management chain okay a chain security group will have so all the level management level people will be part of that security group and that will be taking care of consolidated approval okay one person as part of the consolidated approval will be approving to move further approval chain in the sense chain of approvers who are part of the management chain security group needs to take an action meaning that multiple approvers has to be action on this one consolidated approval chain because there is no option uh, for skipping others when one person has taken action okay so it's uh, similar to approval and approval chain but only the thing is in approval approval chain we can have specific security groups but whereas uh, any security groups but whereas consolidated approval and consolidated approval chain needs to have a specific security group called management chain action okay so list of people in the management chain, they need to take care of consolidated approval chain, both consolidated approval and consolidated approval chain. That's what consolidated approval talks about. Okay. 
anyone have any confusion in understanding between mm-hmm. consolidated approval and approval and consolidated approval chain and approval chain anyone have any difficulties in understanding chain of approvals will be including in the management level so that goes based on management chain okay and whereas the regular approval whoever you wanted to have the business decides that secretary group will be taking care of the approval part actually okay again consolidated approval and consolidated approval chain will be based on the requirement okay case to case based on the specific need you will be adding this one but there is an approval for every business process there needs to be an approval process so you will be configuring an approval for every business process whereas an approval chain specific requirement you might have for only those cases you will be configuring approval chain actually consolidated approval chain and approval chain okay that's what you can actually differentiate between approval and consolidated approval now coming to the other step called additional data edit additional data okay in any scenario if you hear anything called additional data in workday which means that it's a custom data okay additional data in the sense in workday it is a custom data okay whichever workday has not provided you will be configuring as a kind of custom field in workday and that custom field will be named as a kind of additional data okay if you go to any employee profile if you go to any employee profile in workday you say if i go for jacqueline's profile personal okay in personal or there should be overview okay so you can see additional data here right whatever the fields information that you are seeing here all these are custom data these are not something in a work that has provided okay all these are custom fields configured in this tenant okay so these are all custom fields okay so any time if you hear a term called additional data think that that is a custom data actually okay so if you wanted to have that custom data to be edited okay additional edit additional data as part of the business process okay as part of the business process if you wanted to have additional data to be edited we will be configuring that as part of the business process okay any business process requirement has to edit any specific um the you know, custom data you will be configuring that as part of the business process and have it executed for the action that's what edit additional data talks about okay integration okay this is a little bit technical actually whenever you wanted to have integration to be triggered by the business process you will be configuring that integration to the business process and whenever that business process transaction happened that will be triggering the integration actually okay i'll give you one example that i've seen uh not sure whether you will be able to get this um let me take a easy thing that i have done okay so there is a background check um, uh, activity background check integration uh, related thing was there so back, generally background background check if you think this background check is one of the business process step type in the job application business process that happens in the recruiting actually okay when a candidate gets shortlisted okay an offer will be released and post offer um reference check and background check steps will be triggered and based on that hire will be triggered for an employee okay so now when when candidate is moved to background check as part of the business process that will be triggering one of the integration that is configured as part of the step and then integration will run based on the business process execution and will be sending candidate data to that background check vendor who will be performing a kind of background check and then based on the successful completion of the background check um candidate will be turned into 
employee through job application business process. Now, so, considering specific type that we are concerned here, when I configure integration here, it will ask you, it will ask you what is the integration that you wanted to attach. Okay. Same like questionnaire, it will ask you what is the integration that you wanted to run as part of the business process. It will ask. You can actually pick any of the integration that you wanted to have to be triggered by the in, by the business process. Let's say configure integration is the integration. Okay. Some random integration that is there with the worker name I'm taking. Some configuring as part of the business process step. Okay. Now if I click on OK, your integration is configured to the business process. And whenever your business process is running, it will trigger the business process. It will trigger the integration called uh, uh, worker. You can see this is the integration actually. Okay. So as part of the business process initiation will happen and approval will happen once the approval is completed. HR will be getting um, one more notification to configure these questions and then it will move for configure worker a kind of integration actually. This does not need but need to run by specific person actually. It automatically triggers um, so based on the user that you give actually. Okay, integration is this one. If it needs to be run by specific user, let's say Jacqueline. Jacqueline is a Whenever business process step triggers the integration step, it will be running by Jacqueline in the background. And based on that, your output will be returned accordingly. Okay. Based on that, your output will be returned accordingly. So you can actually add integrations reports to the business process, and business process will take care of running the integration and generating a reports actually. So it will reduce manual efforts actually. Okay. So that too. There needs to be need actually. You cannot configure every business process, every integration to the business process. No, you cannot do that. Okay. So only specific kind of step related things. Let's say background check is there. Okay. Background check, you have built an integration that sends um, employee data to or candidate data to background check vendor. Okay. But when this business integration has to trigger, so dynamically or statically, this has to trigger. So as part of the business process, when candidate has completed the recruiting stage, the background checks needs to be performed. You will be attaching this thing and this will trigger to the background check vendor who will be performing background check and validate the background check um, the results actually. Another example that I can say, okay. So um, one of the recent thing that I've done, expense related thing, okay. So whenever employee submits employee expense request to a manager, manager will be approving this one, okay. Manager will be approving. And uh, once manager approves, an expense letter has to generate for an employee through integration. Okay. So this happens as part of the business process event. Okay. There is a business process called expense event. If you configure any integration, okay, that generates letter for an employee, you will be attaching that integration to the business process. And when business process triggers, integration will run automatically and generates a expense letter for an employee. Okay. So such kind of things. You can actually configure an integration and integration will take care of running as part of the business process. Okay. So any of the technical, um, you know, the uh, integration that you will be developing that has to run as part of the business process, you'll configure as how I've done. Okay. Any questions on the um, integration? Okay. Anything unclear on the integration part, configuring integration to the business process? Anything that you did not follow? Could you run through it quickly once again, please? Okay. So basically, in the term integration means integrating data from one system to other system. Okay. So kind of uh, you know um, a technical uh, job that will run integrates the data from one system to other system. Okay. Now. When it, when it needs to send data from other system, there needs to be a trigger actually, whether you're running it manually or it runs through automated process when you schedule that one. 
okay so which will trigger based on that data will be integrated to other system now you want this kind of integrations to run as part of the business process okay dynamically as part of the business process you want this integration trigger the moment candidate is moved to background check your integration to, should trigger actually i told you right in workday we have a recruiting module in recruiting there is a business process called job application which will be consisting of steps like interview assessment reference check background check offer ready to hire these are all the business process step okay when a candidate has moved okay has cleared the interview then candidate has moved to background check step okay so when candidate has moved to background check step system will automatically trigger the integration based on the configuration that i have shown you system will trigger the integration and that will send candidate data to background check vendor and then uh, background check perform here the key thing that is happening here is you are attaching integration to the business process and the moment business process step triggers it will run the integration and data will be integrated to the vendor actually so that's how you use your integrations in the business process did that makes clear understanding yes thank you so such kind of things you can actually configure as part of the business process so that the results will be dynamic actually okay that's on the um, integration similarly reports also will be there okay what the report in workday means not only in workday any system report is nothing but which returns the data from the system okay integration is nothing but which sends the data from one system to other system whereas report in the sense it will return the data that is sitting in system actually okay so if you wanted to have those reports to be run automatically by the business process as how i've shown you the integration part similarly you'll have reports also attached to the business process step okay i'm giving step e order as an e and type as report okay and then if you click on okay it will ask you which report that you wanted to have you can select that particular report and um, the report will be running as part of the business process okay as how i explained the integration same way your report will be executed and there is another option called report group actually okay report group in the sense report is one report which will be returning the data but a report group in the sense collection of multiple reports is a report group actually okay 10 reports that are there is collected into one report group which will be consisting of report groups and when you run a report group those 10 reports will run and return the data okay so report and report groups can be configured as, as part of the business process and business process will take care of uh, running those reports okay running those reports and returning the output of those reports okay that's how you have seen workers you should be seeing reports also here okay you should be seeing reports also and reports and report groups actually that's what stocks about okay any confusion on reports and report groups adding to the business process anything not clear anyone have any questions on that i have a question when you're doing your group versus your mm -hmm. report is the report the same report for different people and then in a group are you doing something different other than the one report for different people versus okay. several reports for different people mm -hmm. okay so first you know um, report is a single report and report group is nothing but mixture of multiple reports okay now if you have any requirement okay that all active employees is one of the report which will be returning only active employees okay which will run and return active employees now you wanted to have this report to be executed by the business process which sends results actually which which returns the data as part of the business process okay so you will be configuring a security group okay let's take okay report okay i'll configure a report first i'll configure a report and then 
who has to get this report output i'm giving all hrs has to get this okay Okay, there needs to be a security group here. So whatever security groups that is configured here, when report, when this business process step completes, right? A notification here, we can see here on the top, okay? A notification will be sent to that person with the output file actually, okay? A report runs as part of the business process and report output will be shared to the notifications of that person who is part of the security group so that that person will be reviewing the report results. Now, since there is one report that will be sending one output file and that person can actually take a look. But what if you actually configure a report group? Okay, Report group in the sense is nothing but multiple reports. Okay, Multiple reports running and sending multiple output files to the person who is in the security group actually. Okay. So for the first for first uh, you know uh, the report you can take as all active employees okay so as part of the business process HR mm -hmm. has to get active employees okay so the business process will run that and send this active employee data to that HR administrator but if you configure report group okay report group consists of active employee data terminated employee data and just an exa example I'm saying. So we, mm -hmm. how you can have multiple reports, okay? You can have active employee data, you can have terminated employee data, you can have all contingent workers data, you can have um, all the employees who went on long-term leave data, okay? So these are all four reports I have, okay? Leave data, contingent workers data, active data, and terminated data, okay? These are all the four reports that I have configured in the report group, and report group is attached to the business process. Now, when business process executes, it will run the report groups, when report group triggers, it will run the four reports that we have attached and send these four output files to the HR. Okay, so that HR can view all active employee data, all terminated employee data, contingent worker levers data. So in a single step, they can actually view multiple report output files. Excellent, thank you. Amit, one quick question is like, uh, I'm not able to understand like where we are attaching like uh, uh, that these four groups report? should be. Okay. Uh, so report group, there's a task actually. You can create create report group. Is a, There is a task. Mm -hmm. So where it will ask you to con configure multiple reports into that. Okay. So in this task, we'll be creating a report group. Just for testing. So once you create a report group, it will ask you to attach multiple reports like this, okay? You can have multiple reports. You can add one by one. Click on this, add the report name. And if you if you wanted to have any report filters, you can add those report filters and create a report group. Like this, you can add multiple multiple rows and you can give multiple report names, which will become report group action. So once you have this report group created, you'll attach this report group to the business process, and business process will run the report group, which will trigger all the reports that you've added here. Okay, this is for the report group. And if we are selecting only single report, in that case, also the similar process we have to like which type of report we are looking for. Like we are looking for leave report yeah. or we are looking for the. No, so you just uh, give the report name. That's just, let's say if I go for just one report instead of report group, I'm going for. I'm going for just one report. Okay whatever report that you wanted to attach, you can attach that one, okay? So now, I've added just a report, click on okay. Yeah, there is security group, okay. So you can actually, 
have any report if you have if there is a need for only active employees okay if that active employee report is not there in the system you can create that report and attach that report here okay if we need to attach any terminated report here okay so terminated data report is not there in the workday system you can attach the term report here and that will take care of adding the report okay So the report is, we have one big concept called reporting. So once we are done with all the functional things, we'll be getting into reports. So you'll be getting a kind of understanding to create report, how to create reports and all. Um, uh, my, I'm just trying to understand to specify that particular report. We so need these are to all report have report somewhere, right? No, no. Present no. Somewhere. So whatever worker allocation that I've taken it, it is one of the report actually. Yeah, but it okay. must be created somewhere earlier, right? That you need to create. Yeah, that's what the report has to be there in the system. Okay. Yeah. Then only you can call that system. Yeah. That's how I've created okay. report groups. So you need to create a report. Or you can actually, if you wanted to have any of the delivered reports that Workday has provided, you can actually take that report also. Okay. But report has to be there in the system. Without that, you cannot attach that. And is it possible like from the report group, we can only pull up only some specific report? Is it possible to pull only specific reports from this report group? As per your requirement, you can actually configure report groups. Okay. Report group, the meaning of the report group in the is it will con it will handle multiple reports actually. You can add multiple reports and when you run a report groups it automatically triggers all the reports okay if you have 10 reports okay 10 reports you wanted to run in one go okay in that in that sense you can actually add all those 10 reports to the report group and run the report group which will trigger all the 10 reports you will get 10 output files simultaneously okay so if you wanted to attach that to the business process you can add any reports that you got there is no specification that only these reports can be attached to the report group. No, we can add any of the report that you create and attach to the report group. <laughs> report groups in the sense, it consists of multiple reports. Okay, so you need to have those multiple reports before you create a report group. Then there is no need of, um, if you don't have multiple uh, reports, then you cannot create a report group, no? Right, right. No, yeah. I'm just trying to understand, like, uh, are we creating uh inside the report group itself or we are just like uh, calling them and then adding them no 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 so there is a separate task create a report custom report there is a task you can create the reports through the task and have those uh, multiple reports added to the report groups and you can actually run a report group to trigger multiple output files in one go so basically business process configuration is completely a functional task actually okay functional team members will be configuring the business process okay and integration is completely a kind of technical skill set where a developer work the developer will be developing the integration okay so once if you have any kind of specifications that business process should hold any integration so basically when i've done I was the you know integration developer and I've configured the business process, called that integration into business process and configured that part. But now I think the things have changed. Okay. So functional team will be configuring the business process. Um, once the integration developer has developed the integration, functional team will be configuring the business process and call that integration into the business process. Okay. They'll complete uh, uh, setup of the um, integration into the business process and have it triggered by the business process. Okay, so integration developer will be developing the integration and functional team member will be calling that integration to the business process. That can happen. Or if the same integration developer who has developed the integration is aware of configuring the business process, that person can also take care of configuring the business process by attaching the integration to the BP. BP in the sense business process. Perfect. So there is a dedicated role for integration. Yeah, integration um, um, is a demanded role in Workday. Okay. Person who will be developing integrations, integrating data from one system to other system is a specific skill set. Even in our course also, we have integration concept. We'll be learning how to create integrations. In our last 
two concepts that we have are related to integrations. So we'll be learning how integrations can be created. So that's what report report groups talks about. Okay, I think with that, I think we should be good. We've covered all the important step types that we typically configure. Okay, and uh, service. Okay, service in the sense, um, basically that is related to integrations. Actually, okay, these are all something related to integrations. Okay. If you wanted to send the data to any system, okay, service will give you option to deliver, document delivery in the sense, send file to other system. Document retrieval in the sense, get file from other system, okay. So document retrieval and document delivery steps are integration related, um, you know, uh, kind of steps that you can configure to deliver once you develop any integration. If you configure a business process step, type called service to that, it will allow you to select these two options. If you have a requirement to send the data to other system, it will be selling, selecting document delivery. If you wanted to get the data from other system into Workday, you will be selecting document retrieval. Okay. So these are the two traditional steps that we have and the rest of the things are uh, recently added uh, types actually. Okay. So recently added um, steps types, create case. Okay. Create case is nothing but which allows to create a case with Workday. So this requires some additional uh, module called Workday Help. Okay, there is a module called Workday Help, which is like um, you know service now, uh, Zira, Gendas kind of uh, ticketing tools are there, right? Similarly, we have a module called Workday Help actually. Okay, which is something um, which manages for all the um, you know support related tickets through uh, supported. So Workday Help will actually act as a kind of a, a ticketing um, application. If you wanted to raise any case automatically, say so have a business process step type that will take care of raising any kind of Workday Help case action. And rest of all other things are related to integrations where you can actually configure this to send the data and to get the data from other application. Okay. So these things you can automate through business process rather than manual action of sending the data, uploading files into the external system, you can actually automate that through business process. You can do schedule also. So when we go to the integration, you'll get more conceptual understanding of the integration behavior. But as part of the business process, if integration has to run or trigger the file, they can actually go to the service action. Service will take care of, allow you to configure document delivery and document retrieval steps. So those are the step types that you need to know. At least you need to know the purpose and the uh, meaning of each of the step type that you have so that you can actually configure when you get any kind of requirement, okay? But as I said, mostly the regular things that you'll be doing as part of the vision of our step is action and approval. These are the two things that you'll be configuring mostly in the business process, okay? That's what step types talk about. So we have um, two types of integrations. One type of integration, within that integration, you have an option to configure this document delivery and document retrieval, okay? But the second type of integration is called custom integrations. These are out of the box integrations, okay? This does not have standard options to select document delivery or document retrieval, okay? So for, that, for those kind of integrations, you'll be configuring the business process and then within that business process, you'll be attaching, you'll be selecting a service, and then you'll be selecting a type called document delivery. And then once you select a document delivery system, will ask you where you wanted to send this document, okay? To which system you wanted to send document, okay? So either it is a SFTP or Amazon, um, you know, storage system, or there are certain standard uh, delivery steps that you have. So once you send a document delivery, it will ask you to configure all those document delivery details based on that file will be document from workday will be sent to other system okay perfect. so for so the, uh, second set of so, so what is that so these are pre-built services where you can give in the parameters yeah perfect these are pre-built but we'll be getting the delivery details from the external system let's say you want to send data to um, other systems other uh, vendors 
storage system okay so that vendor has to give you their system details so that you'll configure those system details in the integration and integration will be sending data to that particular system perfect thank you so we'll be learning more about integrations in our integration concept okay though we'll not be testing any uh, deliveries but we'll try to get more understanding the behavior of the integration how they can be configured or not we'll be learning more in the integration concept but for now take a kind of understanding that business process have an option to trigger the integration automatically rather than manual run of the integration or schedule run of the integration business process also can take care of the integration running automatically when business process executes okay so I'll I'll um, I've, I spoke a lot today. Okay, so what I'll do is um, I'll um, in the notes that I'll be sending um, by end of this week. Okay, whatever I spoke, the types, each of the step that I've which I've described, right? I'll be giving you a kind of explanation for each step type that you can take as a reference. Okay, so that that will give you a kind of um, understanding or come back and refer that if you're not clear on any of the step type. But these two are the most approval and action are the mostly used step types, okay? So in tomorrow's tomorrow will be, I think we have covered almost all the conceptual information. Tomorrow we'll recap all those things and we'll be getting into the activity, see how, what all the things we have learned will be helpful in performing the activity, okay? If I am the hiring manager, okay? So what I will look, Based on the uh, requ based on the requirement that I have, or general skills that are required for work days, few yeah. very functional skills like um, you know core HR fundamentals. Okay, work day HCM fundamentals, which we have covered and we are covering now. HCM organization jobs positions hiring, and business process configuration are part of HCM fundamentals. Okay. So very basic thing, you know, I'll be looking at these skills so that person who understand, who have this skill set will understand how employee flow will be there in workday system. Okay. How employee transactions are getting executed in workday system. Okay. If there is any kind of support request that comes as part of the ticket, that person will be able to at least investigate and resolve the ticket. Okay. So these are the two essential skill set that I see in workday. And then very basic things in technical areas, reporting and integration. Not a kind of super complex reporting knowledge or super complex integration knowledge is needed. Okay. At least a person should understand when there is a request, I wanted to have all active employee data in Workday. Okay. At least this basic report requests a person should understand and get me a report which is already existing or if something is not getting exist, not is not there in the system, that person should be able to create this simple report and get me the data and similarly integration basic integration setup okay so loading employee data into workday if there is a personal information change for 10 employees that hr or someone has requested okay so a person should understand how to update a personal information rather than manually correcting each employee record automate that 10 records to update uh, through integration with all the personal information required at least these kind of basic things you know that are required for any kind of workday uh, analyst or configurator or a developer so that they'll be any kind of they'll be having a kind of unique skill set that is required in the market okay if you're just focused on functional okay there are less chances okay you are you should be good actually if you have functional complete functional knowledge and if you're not aware of any technical things that's fine but you'll see less openings in those areas okay just with functional skills, you'll be seeing less openings, which are specifically for functional things. But if you have end-to-end skills that covers functional as well as technical, um, which covers major skills, HCM fundamentals, security, business process, reporting, integrations, these are demanded skills, okay? We have other technical skills also, but those are not required actually, okay? These are minimum required in the current work the market um, you know you have and you should be able to get into this at least with minimum technical skill set so that's what current work the market is looking you did not uh, look at the course content uh, so we will be covering both technical as well as functional actually okay yep so we'll be covering reports types of reports uh creating reports and getting the integrations but those are, uh, you know, report, 
i think um, you should be able to get but um, there is another topic called calculations in the, within the report okay so that part is a little uh, uh, you know if you have any kind of previous background in technical areas it should be simple for you to take that outside of so that you need more practice to actually get you need more practice to get some understanding on the calculation but yeah so i think um, um, i'll be able to make keep you in a comfortable zone to understand those things actually so don't worry on that if, even if you don't have any kind of technical expertise the way that we cover uh, reporting the way that the, the way that we cover integrations will give you a kind of uh, um confidence that you, you can actually handle those uh, uh, report creations and uh, integration creations